What else have got you here? Um, Abbott's Wood, or whatever its new name is, mm -hmm. you can't presumably yet talk about it, but it's getting closer to the, the sort of final. Yeah, obviously, part the, of the it. police have made a statement now, yeah. um, and obviously, there, there will be um, potentially court action resulting. Mm -hmm. um, that's a matter for the police and the courts. Um, it is not, it would be highly inappropriate for me as a politician to be commenting on what could potentially be a court matter. And will there be an inquiry into it besides the police? Investigation. Will, will the government be looking at it in a separate light, or will there be no need for that because everything will come out in the? Well, we, we'll have to. We'll have to. Let, we'll have to go through the. Let's let's get the court process out of the way as well. Yeah. But like I say, the police have gone through their process. They have now come forward with, um, which is announced this morning, with the decisions um, as to where they're going with this. Mm -hmm. um, that process needs to follow um, its correct course. Okay, because um, I just don't know. Is it open shut? New, I just get a new name. I mean, is, is it? It will reopen. Is reopened? I don't know. What well, it? well, that will that will depend on the that will depend on the licensing and everything else. But uh, like I say, yeah. um, for now, the important thing with this is the police have now come to their conclusions. They've concluded their investigation. There's recommendations off the back of that investigation, which is likely to potentially result in a court process, yeah. from what I've seen. Um, and that process needs to run its course. And, and once it has run its course, shouldn't be commenting on sure. a court process. Once it has run its course and sub subject to it hasn't that far, you know, general elections and that sort of thing, you'll be talking to us about it? You'll be able to talk to us? About yes, it? yeah. I mean, I, well, yeah. I, me or whoever, whoever is, whoever yeah. is around at the time, Paul, that you yeah. end up stuck with. <laughs> um, hospital, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Where are we up to? I mean, again, I'm hearing all sorts of, obviously, backlogs and, and, and people suffering because they can't get uh, uh, the operations done. Any glimpse of hope for these people. Yeah, Ma Manx Care is working on trying to get, um, you know, to actually try and bring the backlogs down. In some areas they're already starting to see an effect of that, but we do have to recognise, and I've always been quite honest about this, COVID has caused substantial backlogs, particularly mm. around orthopaedics and other areas. We can look to try and bring resource in, but the UK is in exactly the same mm. position. My counterpart Matt Honcock this morning actually announced that, you know, it could be about five years before the UK actually she brings down, just deals with the backlog and brings things back to normal. Um, so we're a bit limited where we can draw resource from because the UK has its own issues. But we are, in, and I know Manx Care are endeavouring to try and see what they can do to bring waiting lists down. And there's very initi uh, various initiatives potentially in the pipeline. Are they stretched at the minute? Is everything working okay? I mean, we're, we're always stressed because we've got to keep a COVID response as well. I mean, yeah. the, the staff working in Manx Care um, and, and also out in private care as well, actually, have done an absolutely fabulous job over the last 18 months. They've been working under tremendous pressure and they continue to do so. Um, but uh, how some of them keep smiling, I don't know. But, um, but they've, they've been doing the job and they've done an excellent job of protecting the island. And the, the private ward... Where are we up to on that? Because uh, I know someone had to go in and they were private. They, they, they get cash back from their insurers because the insurers going mad because there is no private ward yep. for these so people. So the private ward got obviously delayed due to COVID again because we had to use the side rooms during the last mm. um, lockdown. Um, but that now is moving back to moving on schedule to get the private ward open. Mm -hmm. um, the likelihood is as a potential interim step, we'll get Manx Care to open it while we're looking for a partner to partner with. And anything else while well, I've got you here? Because last time you, you thought something that I hadn't thought of or whatever. Um, no, are we up I, to think, date? Uh, I think we are up to date. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to curse it by saying... That's um, rude. Um, you know, we've got the changes that are coming in on the 28th. Some people will be very nervous about those changes, and I can fully understand why. Um, but the important thing is it is another step on the road. It also equally is not the finalised version of the borders. So those who talk about discrimination with double vax and everything else, this is an interim step. It's yeah. not saying in 10 years' time, if you've had the vaccination, you'll be coming in like this, and mm -hmm. if you haven't, you'll be taking a different route. Our aim is still to get to unrestricted travel, but with what's happening around us and the fact that we need to get our own vaccination programme completed, it is a sensible interim step that allows us to open up more while at the same time trying to put protections in place. And you're confident, and did I ask you this question, you answered it, but I'll just ask you again, about the having uh, NHS England getting us sorted 
in time for that 28th day. Yeah, NHS Digital has said that um, in terms of the app, which I assume is what you're referring yeah. to, um, that we will be live by the 28th. And what will it and won't show? Because it's, it's quite interesting, it, it, it lists things it might show, but they, are we excluded from the full app? Right, now th this is a good one to clarify, actually, and that's a very good point, Paul, go. um, because it gives me an opportunity to say publicly, of course, there was very big concern by quite a few people around um, the fact that NHS Digital was sharing information um, with third parties parties in the UK. Now, we made absolutely clear the Isle of Man is not part of that. Now, that continues to be the, play, uh, the case. Some people may be concerned that when they go on the NHS app, they can see their patient access record. I need to reassure people that does not mean the NHS in the UK is sharing our data. The NHS app works like a browser, it does like an internet browser. Oh. So if you view the app, so in a simplistic way, yeah. to put it in a simplistic way, the app is like a browser and the data behind it is like a website. So when you are accessing your patient access records, so that's your medical record at your GPs, etc., the NHS in the UK has no access to that. It is purely allowing it to connect to our secure patient access systems to show the user. Oh. So the data from that does not go anywhere. It has not been shared with so the I UK. So I will get to see it myself on these apps. Yeah. So I thought the, the, only, the only data that will be shared with the UK yeah. is the vaccine data. Yeah. Um, that will be shared, but there will be an opt-out process for anyone who doesn't want that data shared to be able to opt out. Right. But I need to make clear because I know it has concerned some people after the after what was said the other week about the fact we're not party to the data sharing yeah. that when they go onto the NHS app they can see their patient access record. Yeah. But that is because the app is acting as a portal into patient access. It does not mean and no data has been shared with the UK. So the app will work fully then. Because I, I assumed when I saw these things about my records, I will, oh, that'll be there blanked will, off. Well, there will be certain functionality that you may not be able to right. access because of the way patient access is set up, right. um, but the vast majority you will be able to see your records. And you can be in contact with your own GP in the sense, or that? Well, like That's, I say, again, there's certain functionality okay. that doesn't actually... Well, maybe one day it might, because it seems like a good idea. Well, those it who want well. it, those who want it. But, but like I say, the, none, of the, none of the actual main data is shared with the UK NHS or accessible by NHS Digital. Okay. When are you going to take your holiday? <laughs> I think maybe 2023, 24 at this rate. Going to get off the Isle of Man, not you? <laughs> Seems like a long time, doesn't it? It, 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 feel, it feels, um, actually, to be fair, actually, I think the last 15 months or so has gone fairly quickly, but, um, um, I, you know, whether, whether we're actually, um, I've actually got to do much over that time is another matter. Well, thank you for talking to me in person. You know, like, just get that little yeah. dig in there. Live um, one to one. I know these zoom things thanks uh, so maybe we will maybe we won't i don't know we'll see how we just go and uh, if there's questions yeah. but uh, obviously very exciting you'll be probably down the airport or seaports waving people in or out <laughs> won't you with flags on, on the magic day 28th no be quite amazing i think the last thing people need to see when they arrive on the isle of man paul is me 